Hey, it's Mike here, and today I'm going to be responding to Dr. Eric Berg's fascinating benefits of raw cow's milk. He is a doctor in the sense that he's a chiropractor. I feel like most people watching probably think he's a medical doctor. I had to point that out. And he has like 8 million subscribers, and each video like this one gets you know, at least 200,000 views. So I feel a special need to respond because of that. But in his video, he touts a ton of poorly backed benefits of raw milk while ignoring the danger. He talks about a bunch of diseases that it potentially could help with. Ulcers, their GI problems, inflammation in the gut to help with allergies, gout. He talks about how like lactose intolerance isn't as bad for raw milk and I have a study that directly responds to that as well as a bunch of other claims about like enzymes and different compounds in raw milk. First a quick quick announcement, wouldn't you like to be removing plastic from the ocean when you buy stuff? I sure would. Well for a limited time until July 3rd you can Make an order with Vivo Life, and for every order, they will remove a kilogram of ocean plastic. Good on you guys. And to supercharge the ocean cleanup, they're also offering 15% off all orders and 15% off your first subscription in case you want to get supplements recurring and all that good stuff. So link below automatically applies to the discount. Moving on. All right, now into the raw milk debate. First, I just need to mention, you know, pasteurization is a process where you're heating milk to 145 degrees Fahrenheit for 30 minutes. And that is what's being criticized here. But I am not going to be defending any cow's milk products. I have a ton of videos on why I think they're not healthy and we'll touch a little bit on the end. Because at some points, it seems like I'm defending pasteurized milk. I'm not. Anyway, here's Eric Berg with his classic whiteboard. White. Now, there's some fascinating benefits with raw milk and raw milk products that I'm going to talk about today. I'm so calm. Listen to me. I'm Eric Berg. Maybe try talking way faster and more annoyingly like me, Eric. <laughs> Seriously, I think he's employing some subtle ASMR tactic, kind of hypnotizing people like, mmm, dairy fat is so good. I should start an ASMR channel. Ask someone, what is the most perfect food for an infant? Um, I would imagine they would say breast milk, right? So he does rant about human breast milk being good. I think we all agree with that, but it's sort of framing for why raw milk could be good as well. Anyway, here he is next. So if breast milk is so good, why is cow's milk or goat's milk so bad? That's what I want to discuss. Well, I think it really has to do with the quality of milk, okay? Pasteurization. Maybe because it's meant for baby bovines who grow to 600 pounds during the 10 months in which they are breastfed. Humans, on the other hand, slowest growing mammal on earth in terms of getting to maturity. Interesting stuff. And major ew looking at those hands milking that cow. That just seems so wrong on so many levels. I feel like I'm going to need to have some Vivo Life greens just in order to deal with the oxidative stress of looking at that. Oh, I love it so much better than other greens. And it's a multi-nutrient. Anyway, moving on. It was interesting that he sort of admitted that cow's milk is bad to some degree. I don't know if that was sort of just an ironic statement. I'm not saying that there wasn't outbreaks of certain uh, diseases like TB and things long ago due to sanitation. He touches on infectious diseases and it's completely lacking in terms of the warnings that should be given with regard to raw milk. Principally, the thing that he fails to mention is that we are still having raw milk outbreaks and we've had an increase in pretty recent years from people deciding they want to drink raw milk to be healthier. But if you have a healthy environment for that cow and that cow is healthy, then what's really bad with milk? First thing is pasteurization. So you now want to bet on every cow in the supply chain happening to be healthy. And you can be healthy and still get a little infection here or there, or the milk can become contaminated after and from a perfect cow. And it goes on to present some fancy enzymes and words that we'll get to in a second, but some fancy words that he does not mention are the pathogens often present in raw milk from the CDC. Here is a list, and this includes Campylobacter and Salmonella, which are our leading killing foodborne illnesses. Zah. Well, you might want to say, we want to sterilize the milk to make it really healthy, to get rid of all the bacteria in this milk, this very unhealthy pathogenic uh, substance. Uh, yeah, that's what a lot of public health agencies say. In Australia and Canada and other places, fully illegal. And I know being illegal isn't a huge scaring point for a lot of people, but I also don't want people to sort of be taken advantage of in terms of some anti-government sentiment and being like, the government is anti-raw milk, so let's chug it. 
No. Yes. No. Yes. Heat kills bacteria, but it doesn't get rid of bacteria. When you're drinking pasteurized milk, you're drinking all the dead bacteria that's in it. But it still kills most of that bacteria, which can infect and kill you. I mean, imagine it's a zombie apocalypse. You have two roads you can run down to escape the city. One has like a thousand living zombies on it. I guess they're dead, but they're still moving. And then the other one just got like air support and all the zombies are killed pretty much. Which one are you gonna wanna go down? You're gonna wanna go down the one where the zombies are dead. Thankfully, you can just bypass this whole scenario and drink plant milk. Yeah, so just dodge that zombie apocalypse with plant milk. But it is worth mentioning beyond what he's talking about to sort of also attack pasteurization a little bit. Bacteria can still survive to some degree. I mean, as this paper mentioned, streptococcus, like strep throat type bacteria can survive that heating process. And to go even further than that, as this Pennsylvania study on dairy farms found, the bacteria counts can in some cases go pretty much right back up to where they were between pasteurization and to the time that someone, whether human or animal, is going to be drinking that milk. But another thing that happens when they pasteurize the milk is they're killing all the enzymes, okay? Uh, that is wrong. They're not killing all of the enzymes. For example, protease can survive and that is what leads to milk spoiling in many cases. And as this study found, protease activity can in some cases go up during heating, but during pasteurization heating levels, we're talking about only just a 20% total drop, not all enzymes by any means. And I'm talking about proteins that can help someone's immune system. Like for example, lactoperoxidase, which is an antibacterial enzyme. I don't think Dr. Berg has looked super deeply into this. I know he's cranking out a lot of whiteboard videos, but if you actually look to studies like this one, it mentions that about 70% of that lactoperoxidase is retained after pasteurization. So is a 30% loss in that activity really gonna make any difference? I don't think it would clinically. And this paper does do a good job of covering this issue in its entirety and concludes, of course, that raw milk is not inherently safe and carries a significant food poisoning risk with its consumption. And it really is gonna be a trend here. Every single aspect that he mentions, there is not data to back up that it's actually helpful in humans. There's no lactoperoxidase trial that looks at like, infection risk versus having it and not having it. Total speculation anyway. He keeps going with more fancy words you haven't heard of. Lactoferrin, which is a protein, that starves off pathogens from iron, okay? So when you have pasteurized milk, that's destroyed. The antibodies in milk are also destroyed. That is an immune benefit that you won't have. So if raw milk is good for your immune system, we would see less infections in people consuming raw milk. Nope, from the CDC, the risk of infection from raw milk causes about 840 times the number of infections that pasteurized milk does. Doesn't sound good for people's immune systems. Now there have been a few deaths in this area and I don't think that any of those antibodies or lactoferrin were helping the situation. There are certain bacteria that make the enzyme to get rid of lactose, okay? And so those of us that have lactose intolerance, like myself, need lactase, which is the enzyme that breaks down lactose. And in raw milk, there's that enzyme. This is probably the most brazenly debunkable claim, the claim that lactase in this raw milk might help people who are lactose intolerant. Well, we can look to this randomized control trial by Stanford University researchers. And the conclusion, well, I don't think I'd wanna be anywhere near him when he's consuming these lactose-based products because raw milk does not help. Let's go now to the fart chart and just as many farts or flatulence with raw milk as pasteurized milk. They also did hydrogen breath tests and so the higher the amount of hydrogen that is coming out, the worse the lactose response is. And from this chart, you can see that it definitely peaked even higher in the raw group. So maybe that light cooking helps. Yeah, the malabsorption was worse. Finally, and very interestingly, this study was partially supported by the Weston A. Price Foundation, which pushes raw milk as well as a bunch of animal fat. And I have an entire video on that I'll link below. But thankfully, these researchers had the integrity to post the results, even though they were against the person's funding agenda. Homogenation is about breaking up the fat into small little particles that 
now you lose the function of that fatty acid. He then talks about how homogenization of milk messes with like the little fatty acid profiles. Well, guess what? Mr. Bergalowski, that's his real name before he got a simple stage name to appeal to the masses. <laughs> I'm totally joking. You're still gonna have the same amount of saturated fat in either milk that raises LDL or bad cholesterol, which is causally linked to atherosclerosis as the European Society of Cardiology mentions. And I don't know about you, but my body craves the cream on raw milk. In fact, I could probably live on that cream. It's so delicious and it's so good for you. Well, people die on it, so maybe take it easy there. Maybe don't go that hard. It has something called the Waltzen factor. What is the Waltzen factor? That's an anti-stiffness factor. And I'm not gonna give you the long chemical name, but it's good for rheumatoid arthritis and stiffness because it's anti-inflammatory. And I'm just gonna go ahead and capture this point for team plant because ironically, the Wolzen factor is an outdated term for stigma sterol, a compound from plants. From the study, the main dietary sources were coffee, vegetables, and plant oils. You know, maybe that's because people are pasteurizing their milk. Well, the closest study I could find on raw dairy was on raw goat butter which technically it should also be in if it's gonna be in cow's milk, but they couldn't even detect it until they added vegetable fat. Total BS, plants are the best source. On the contrary, there are people with a certain genetic mutation that can make them prone to bacteria in cow's milk triggering rheumatoid arthritis from some 2018 research. Interesting stuff. Yeah, the head researcher says, quote, we believe that individuals born with this genetic mutation and who are later exposed to MAP, which is the trigger they're talking about, through consuming contaminated milk or meat from infected cattle are at a higher risk of developing rheumatoid arthritis. But get this, then he says he doesn't even consume raw milk directly. He just eats like cheese and other raw milk products. Now, I do wanna say that I don't drink raw milk. I actually consume raw milk products that are fermented, okay? Um, like raw milk cheese, which I love. Maybe it's because he's wrong about any benefit of lactase in raw milk, and he probably does turn into his own Berg chamber over there. You know, raw milk gas overload. Anyway, the video still is the benefits of raw milk. So he's trying to sell that idea here. I don't know if he thinks it's like a popular idea or why he's doing it. Now, raw cheese is not safe either. We have pretty recent outbreaks in Europe where it's more common. We're talking E. coli from raw cow cheese and a very recent salmonella outbreak from raw goat cheese. And the CDC does say that most of these cases go undetected, which is really important. He then rattles off a bunch of potential health benefits that people believed in like the 1900s. Early in the 1900s, there were all sorts of people using raw milk for cures for all sorts of things to help their ulcers, their GI problems, inflammation in the gut, to help with allergies, gout, uh, gum disease, and even asthma. We sort of suggest that raw milk could help with everything from like ulcers to gout and his links in the description are two studies that don't really have anything to do with anything and if you look at these benefits he lists in the description no studies next to them at all this is just not a good way to go about spreading health information just very little science behind it just because you have some names of some enzymes in there doesn't mean that it's good science he finishes off by sharing Weston A. Price Foundation's how to get infected map. I'm kidding, it's the raw milk access map of like how to become part of a cow share and stuff. I think very irresponsible. And I just wanna mention some of the extra health risks of dairy in general, which would apply to both milks. I mean, we of course have the IGF-1 in there, which is the connection to acne and potentially cancer. We have the increased prostate cancer risk, especially with guys who consumed milk in adolescence in a higher amount. We have the molecular mimicry slash autoimmune risk of these queso proteins reacting with MS patients and type one diabetes. And don't get me started on casomorphins and on and on. I think you're getting the picture because in the end, 
these benefits of raw milk are far outweighed by the potential, you know, 840 times risk of infection. You know, he's once again making a spurious, you know, really easy to, to disprove pro animal fat animal product claims that I don't know if it's just because he likes to eat these products, he believes it, or he knows that people watch these videos. No, raw milk does not help your immune system. There's no good data for that. It's, it's kind of like licking a door handle or something. It's not going to be beneficial for your immune system. And then the lactose idea that he's putting out there, there's absolutely no benefit, demonstrably false. It's bad for people with lactose intolerance just as much. And finally, once again, dairy is the main source of saturated fat in the US diet and heart disease is our number one killer. So we don't need to be eating more dairy products, whether they're raw or pasteurized. And finally, thankfully, I was able to successfully buffer the oxidative stress of making this video with Thrive products. So if you do want to help clean up the ocean by buying stuff a kilogram at a time, of ocean plastic, then of course you can just click the link below automatically. You'll have all the discounts applied at checkout. And of course, I'm very grateful to Vivo Life for helping to keep this channel going. And thank you to everybody who's watched and feel free to like and subscribe and let me know down below what you think about Dr. Eric Berg's raw milk benefits. See you next time.